Well, good morning from Happy Camp Christian Fellowship. There is a total in our congregation this morning of four. Are we six feet apart? Yes. Have we touched each other? I think uh, maybe a shoe bump is what we had this morning. So yes, we are taking every precaution um, and that kind of thing. So before we get started, um, let's pray real quick. Just give this time to the Lord and we will um, kind of sh- kind of share with you what the format's going to be today. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. Lord, you said that when we give you our day, that Father, it will succeed. And Father, we want this to be a success. We want uh, our worship to be that which glorifies you. We want, Lord, our prayers to reach you. And Father, you said in your word, wherever two or more are gathered in your name, that you are in their midst. And Father, whether it's on Facebook or here in uh, the church, and Father, we know that you are here. And I thank you that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. So we just give you this time in Jesus' name. Amen. So the way this is going to work is as we... um, do some uh, of the announcements and that kind of stuff, you guys are welcome to um, type in a message. Um, Like, uh, you know, I can see Bob is on there. I can see uh, Linda is there. You can share your prayer requests. Um, You can share testimony. If you have a question, we may or may not be able to answer that. Um, We'll try uh, so we want you just to be able to um, to do that. And so in between our worship sets, uh, then we will um, go ahead and pray for those uh, requests and, uh, and kind of go from there. So tune in. Um, a couple of things. I, I know I already got a prayer request uh, first thing this morning. Um, we're not going to use names. Um, unless you really specifically want us to um, indicate that in your request. Um, But I do have one here for uh, a lady who was having some back problems um, this week. And I just pray that, uh, you know, um, that she would get better. So, Marisa, you had shown some interest in praying. So why don't you go ahead and pray for for, uh, this gal's back and we will join with you. Jesus, we just thank you that you are good. Lord, we don't understand your ways all the time. We don't understand what goes on in this world, God, but you bring peace. And Lord, we just ask for this lady, for her back, God, that you would just touch it, or that you bring healing, or that there would be just a sense of your peace, that you are with her, and you know the needs before we even ask them, God. And this time, Lord, I just pray that anxiety would be gone in the name. Jesus. Amen. So, um, a couple of things. You know, normally we pray for our Operation Christmas children. I would ask that you continue to do so. Um, We pray for our students. Now, our students aren't at home, so because they're not at home, that means they're with the parents. And uh, that sometimes can be, that change of schedule can be a little bit rough. So, I would say pray for the students. And pray for their parents as well. Um, pray for our nation. Obviously, we've got a uh, we've got a uh, outbreak of this uh, coronavirus, and and just kind of keeping you up to date. Um, I know that many of you are already praying. I've seen posts on your Facebook pages and uh, things like that. Keep praying. Keep praying that the Lord will protect our nation that the Lord will give our leadership wisdom. In fact, in Romans chapter 13, the Lord says that we need to honor them. So we are trying our best to stay indoors, uh, even as our governor, uh, Newsom, has uh, requested that everybody stay indoors um, and no gatherings of more than 10 people is what our president has uh, Requested, and we are going to honor uh, his request as well. You may not like either one of those leaders, 
but the Lord does not differentiate. In fact, he says there in chapter 13 that he sets up all that are in authority over us, and if we don't obey those authorities, unless, of course, they're telling you to do something completely against what the scripture would say, unless we obey them, then it's going to go um, poorly for us. We're dishonoring the Lord. And uh, when we dishonor the Lord, we're kind of stepping out from under the umbrella of his protection. So please pray for our leadership, pray for our nation, pray for our country, pray for those that are sick um, among us, which means we do have to kind of um, stay away from, uh, well, there is a scripture that says that we need to greet one another with a holy kiss. Well, Kissing today, unless it's your spouse, might not be a good idea. Shaking hands today may not be a good idea. Why? Well, in our area, do we have coronavirus? Yes, we do. Not in Happy Camp that we are aware of. Um, but in Siskiyou County, there are two cases. And um, because we are uh, ambulance service folks, we um, have uh, information that comes our way. And we were notified last night that there are two cases in Siskiyou County. Now, Siskiyou County is like the fourth largest, I think, um, uh, county in California, but we are really spread out. <laughs> so when you say Siskiyou County, that's not your next door neighbor. We don't know who these people are, but pray for them uh, because this, this uh, virus that we're seeing um, may seem initially um, by... Some of the interviews that people have had on, uh, on the news to be pretty simple. Hey, I went through it. I had a slight fever, a little bit of a cough, and then I was fine. Um, but we haven't had any interviews from anybody that died from it. Um, why? Because they were on a ventilator and they died from it. In fact, in Italy, what was it? 800 in the last like 24 hours or 48 hours or something like that. Um, have died. Uh, now, that's not necessarily the case here in the United States, but um, Italy is not known for obeying its government, um, nor are some other countries that are really struggling with this. We need to honor our government and do what uh, they are asking us to do um, that would uh, sit well also with what the Word tells us. So, um, <clears throat> pray for Israel. Now, Speaking of Israel, um, they are a wonderful ally of the United States, and we love them dearly. Um, the scripture tells us that whoever blesses God's people will be blessed. Whoever curses them will be cursed. So I'm really glad that we in the United States do um, have Israel as a friend. That said, I know that they are sending tens of millions of doses of the um, hydroxychloroquine, which is that uh, malaria drug that seems to be working to treat uh, this uh, COVID-19. And I, I say, wow, what a blessing it is, even though they have um, folks there that, that are going through it as well, that they would support us in return <clears throat> is wonderful. So yes, Israel is blessing us. Continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, continue to pray for God's people. Now, um, any other requests uh, that are happening, anything yet? No? So now's the time to, to do that. Put your requests out there, and we'll get to them. I will say that we should pray for those that are sick um, and ill. I know that um, there was a request last week for a gal that was dealing with an infection uh, that may take her life. And we were asked to pray. So let's go ahead and pray um, for that person. So, uh, David, would you mind praying for, uh, for this sepsis case? Lord, I just thank you and praise you that we can lift up our prayers to you. And Lord, I thank you that you do hear our prayers. And Lord, for this person that uh, is experiencing the sepsis, Lord, I just, I just pray for comfort for them. Lord, I pray for healing for them. Amen. And Lord, I just pray for those around them that can support them and love on them as they're going through this. And Lord, I just pray once again 
that you heal them and restore them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And then if you know anybody else that is going through it, um, you know, there's so many people out there that have cancer. Um, and I would also, um, having just gone through this with my own mom and uh, her passing uh, away and on to heaven, um, I, would, I would say pray for the loved ones that are left behind because it's, uh, it's a difficult um, course <clears throat> that is laid out for them. So um, <clears throat> all of our Bible study um, gatherings this week and next week um, have been postponed. Um, I did get a request from Dorothy who uh, heads up the women's prayer group on Monday, she would say, ladies, please continue to pray for Happy Camp, continue to pray for the surrounding communities, and continue to pray for uh, what the Lord would, um, would uh, do in, in specific situations that maybe you were aware of. So keep praying. <clears throat> um, amazing facts that will blow your mind. And of course, birthdays. Men are 25% more likely than women to run stoplights. <laughs> so, that said, you know, I always used to have Alex uh, in the car seat when he was little. We'd drive through Medford and somebody would do something dumb and, you know, just being silly, I would say crazy woman driver um, and, you know, just laugh. Um, and... Uh, and anyway, one day when Robin was driving and somebody did something goofy, Alex um, yelled out, uh, crazy woman driver. <laughs> so be careful. Your kids are listening when you say these things. And statistics, you know, here kind of point to the fact that women may possibly be better drivers that actually obey the laws and men tend maybe not to care so you know there you go so ladies you can kind of rub that one in um on your husband so birthdays hey we have two birthdays judy peabody uh there in syed happy birthday and here in our own uh setup today david colbert has a uh has a birthday this week so let's sing them happy birthday Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Judy and David. Happy birthday to you. And happy birthday to you. And Jesus be true. May God bless you and keep you. Your whole life through. And many more on Channel 4. Scooby Doo on channel two, and let's keep going. So, um, let's talk about a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> think about it. coronavirus. <clears throat> Should we take this seriously? Uh, Romans 13, we talked about. Um, we do need to take it seriously because our government is asking us to. Um, <clears throat> I would also say, um, why is this happening? Uh, According to uh, the word of the Lord, um, I kind of like to throw things out there. I kind of like to think about how the rapture could possibly occur, what would be a precursor. But think about it. If everybody is in their homes and the Lord, even as it says in Thessalonians, comes and snatches out his church, nobody knows that anybody is gone and they could all just say, well, it was the coronavirus or some other disease process or something like that. And nobody would, would uh, think anything of it. And I think, wow, here we are, you know, in this kind of a situation, you don't know. But what I do know is the time is short. God's return is near. You know, he says that he came the first time in love, but when he comes again, it is to judge a Christ rejecting world. So, I would say, um, hang in there and just keep um, doing what you know is right. Are we to be afraid um, of, uh, of this virus? Um, I wouldn't say afraid of it. It's going to be whatever the Lord is going to allow into our lives. 
because all things work together for our good, for those that are called according to God's purpose and his plan. So, but I also like what Psalm 91 verses one through six says, whoever dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty. I will say the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely he will save you from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his feathers and under his wing you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. So the Lord is there like a mother hen, in a sense, kind of surrounding us and protecting us. Um, Does that mean that you won't get the coronavirus? Well, if you follow the guidelines set up by our governor and by um, uh, our president, then there's a good likelihood that you will not see this. Um, But there are things that that we may um, face that um, are difficult. So I had a couple of other announcements and... One of them um, is not, um, it's not gonna happen. So we're gonna just move forward. And uh, I will tell you what the answer is to coronavirus here. We'll sing it to you. <clears throat> Jesus is the answer. We have a prayer request, okay. Yes, so, yeah, she has been, they have been trying to figure out what was wrong with him for like the last week yeah. or so, week and a half actually, I think it is. So he's 10 years old, they have found and confirmed uh, coronavirus, and of course that leads to pneumonia, and you kind of drown from the inside, um, and that is tough. A lot of people think that this isn't serious, but it, it can cause permanent lung damage, but also they're finding that some of these people may end up with permanent heart damage. So yes, let's pray for this young man. Father, I thank you that you are the answer. We pray for strength. We pray for endurance. And we pray that you would give this family hope. We just pray right now that you would reach down, that you would touch this young man, and that you would heal him from this illness and this virus. Lord, clear up those lungs, help him to breathe, and Lord, let this again just be a testimony of how prayer to you, Lord, does work. So we give you his case. Pray that you would go to work in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> okay. Oh, Jesus is the answer.
Any more prayer requests at this time? Uh, I've got one. One, okay. Uh, my mother's mother-in-law, who was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer stage four um, just a few short weeks ago, is doing rather poorly. She's up at Asante right now. The only way they'll let her go home is if she goes on hospice. So it's a very quick decline there. So I'm asking for prayers, not just for her, but for the family. Yeah, for sure. So Father, we do thank you that you hear our requests. We don't have to make them fancy. We just simply have to call upon you. And Father, we just pray for <clears throat> this gal who has pancreatic cancer. And we just pray. Father, that you would minister to her, that you would minister to her family. I know how rough it is going through the loss of a loved one, somebody that is so dear. And Father, I just pray that you would give the family wisdom, that you would give the patient wisdom on how to uh, go about care and things that need to be lined out and... Uh, Lord, just pray that you would minister in that situation. And though many times, Lord, cancer can be that which uh, takes us home to be with you, Lord, we also know that you heal amazingly. And Father, if that is your will here, then we will pray with, with you on that as well and, and agree for uh, a healing touch there. Father, I'm so thankful that you care up about us and that you love us and uh, that we can bring you anything, any problem, any issue, no matter what it is. We thank you for hearing our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So, things that you can do when maybe a family member has cancer, this from experience, take down some notes. We all have cameras, shoot some video, share some great stories, um, and then I would say get all your banking stuff lined out so that there's no problem later on down the road, and uh, just love on each other, um, because we know that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life uh, through Jesus, so keep praying, keep trusting, and then know that if you have the Lord in your heart, then um, you are going to get to see Jesus. So let me switch to this song. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. It's a song out of Proverbs, um, verses 3, 5, and 6. And my. Maybe I. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> Well, one of the ones we're doing. There we go. <clears throat> now, you may not know this one, but if you know the scripture, it's easy to sing along with. And if not, then you can memorize a little scripture as we sing this.
more requests? No, okay. Well, everybody's doing well at home. I will say this. As part of the California Ambulance Association, we get to see a lot of input from other places in the country. And surprisingly, everybody staying home has been, for the most part, a big reduction in ambulance calls. So people aren't out and about jumping off of stuff and getting hurt. <laughs> so. mm, over the mountains and the sea, your river runs me up. change the slide, somebody is paying attention. <laughs> Any more prayer requests, questions? No? Okay. Well, then we will keep going with our worship. Amazing love. I'm forgiven because you are forsaken and accepted.
And we should honor the Lord in every aspect of our life. <clears throat> Questions? Prayers? No? Okay. worthy to accept your forgiveness. You have been faithful to us, though we don't deserve it. We have all sinned and come short of your glory. We've all missed the mark. We've all failed. And yet, Jesus, you came that we might have life and life more abundantly. All we need to do is just let go of our sin, repent, do a Turn around, 180 degree turn, Lord. Turn away from sin and turn towards you. And Father, this morning we do just that. Turn away from the problems, the issues, the things that have weighed us down this week. We give them to you. We turn to, toward you in worship. Father, I thank you so much that we can just pray and allow you to, to minister in every situation. So bless this time. May you be blessed by our worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you know, the Lord says in his word that we are to worship him. And the word worship, speaking of earlier when we were saying greet one another with a holy kiss, um, the Lord says that the term worship means to turn toward and kiss. So, if you are wish worshiping along with us this morning, then you also were kind of giving Jesus a big kiss. So, that's kind of a cool thing. So, we are now going to get into um, our, uh, our study. I just have to change a few things here on the computer um, before we get going. While I'm doing that, 
we can talk about just quickly things that can help clear out your lungs. Water is a wonderful, wonderful thing that God has given to us. Um, and man, staying uh, healthy would include, um, you know, uh, drinking lots and lots of water. One more thing, and we'll get to David here, um, is that exercise is a good thing as well. Now, if you're saying, well, I don't know what exercises to do, you can go to my daughter's uh, Facebook page, Abigail Catherine, e uh, whoops, Abigail Catherine Tower. Old habits die hard, don't they? Um, Abigail Tower uh, is... Um, kind of doing a whole exercise thing right now, and I'm sure there's other things out there as well, um, and you can uh, ask her how to get involved there. But before we get started here, David. Um, just up a few comments. Um, Robin shared some uh, prayer, uh, not prayer requests, but a uh, few exciting things going on, and so it's, it's up there, a few comments, and so, you know, make sure that you check that out. Okay. So yeah, check out the comment section, and there's things there. Um, she stayed home today because she's uh, got a little bit of a, a cold, and she didn't want to get anybody sick, so um, thank you. And uh, um, boy, what a big help she um, has been through uh, this process. So here we go. Today's... Um, service and let me back up because this isn't doing what I'm asking it to do and I know that we're going to have problems if I don't reset this. Come on. you got to love some of this stuff. Let me close out some of these other PowerPoint things and then we'll put that up because I think they're interfering with what I got going. <clears throat> there we go. Now we're on track. So today's service is entitled, If You Trust Me, out of John chapter 12, verses 37 through 50. Now we're going to back up one verse and go to 36 um, through 50 because Jesus is finishing what he's telling the people and we're going to kind of back up a little bit here just to give you um, an understanding of what has taken place. So Jesus has spoken to the people uh, regarding the resurrection of Lazarus from the dead. Um, he let them know that he has the power over death. He has the power that they superstitiously believed if somebody could not be resurrected within three days, that there was no possible way that, uh, that God could, could change that. And Jesus came and proved that. And as a result, many people believed. Jesus had done a ton of miracles already. And there were still a lot of people that just didn't believe. Um, and yet here, he raised Lazarus from the dead. And then because he was the brother to Mary and Martha, Mary and Martha had him over to the house for a barbecue. And they had a, a good time with Jesus there as he shared with them and ministered uh, to them. And then shortly thereafter, Jesus rides in, even as prophesied in the word, to the very moment um, rides into Jerusalem um, on the uh, colt of a donkey, um, and we refer to that as the triumphal entry, and they were singing um, Hosanna to God in the highest. In other words, save now, Lord save now. But they misunderstood what was really happening there. They were thinking that he would take over uh, the government and that he would kick out the Romans, but that is not the way God works. God's economy is usually completely different than ours. And so I would, I would say that um, we need to remember that God's ways are higher than our ways. 
His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we really do need to put our trust in him. And then after the triumphal entry, Jesus then began to let the people know that his hour had come. And uh, if you missed any of these services, you can go to um, happycampfellowship.org and you can pick some of those up. Um, some of those are still loading um, because I have had a busy week and haven't got around to that, but there are other services there that you can turn into. So now let's go ahead and jump in <clears throat> to um, where we're at as far as Jesus asking us to trust him. Verse 36, put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become children of the light. After saying these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. And that's where we left off last week. But despite all the miraculous signs Jesus had done, most of the people still did not believe in him. This is exactly what Isaiah the prophet had predicted. Lord, who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord revealed his powerful arm? Who is Isaiah speaking of? He's speaking of Jesus right here. <clears throat> Verse 39. But the people couldn't believe, for as Isaiah also said, the Lord has blinded their eyes and harden their hearts so their eyes cannot see and their hearts cannot understand and they cannot turn to me and have me heal them. Now, at the top of the verse here, verse 39, it uses the word, uses the word or the term, but. Now, when we translate that, the literal meaning is the consequences of, or the cause of, or the result of, rather, their unbelief is they couldn't believe because the Lord did exactly what they wanted him to do. They didn't want to believe. They didn't want to listen. They did not want to understand. And God is not ever going to force himself on anyone. And so as a result... He says here, because you refuse to believe, I could heal you, but because you refuse to believe, then I'm going to honor your request. I'm going to go ahead and allow your heart to be hardened. I'm going to allow you to be blinded. So what do we need to do as believers? We need to pray for those that are not trusting the Lord to uh, have their eyes opened and to have their, their minds and their understanding changed. And, uh, but that's essentially what the Lord is, is saying here. <clears throat> Worse than being blind and hard-hearted is that God wanted to heal them. He does. He wants to heal us. He wants to fix us. I believe not only physically, but also spiritually. We have a need. We're all sinners. We fall short of God's glory. And he wants us to be healed. Well... Our lack of trust in the Lord directly affects our ability for him to minister to us. So do you want to be healed? Do you want to uh, be cleansed of your sin? Then you've got to trust the Lord. You've got to believe in him. And then he will heal you. <clears throat> now, trusting in Jesus is far better than an N95 mask. So, <laughs> uh, the mask is not going to save you. You can put on the mask and you might beat the coronavirus, but if you don't have the Lord in your heart, then you are you're purposefully blinding yourself, hardening your heart, and the wages of sin is still death. Ten out of ten people die. We're all going to face that at some point. But putting our trust in Jesus, if you put your trust in Jesus, if you would trust me, Jesus would say, I am going to protect you from the harms of sin. Now, this virus we can't see. It's just like sin. Sin is not necessarily a visible thing. It can be. I can go out and do something evil, rob a bank or something like that. That's very visible. But I can also do things in my heart, in my mind, that are not visible, that are still sin. 
And so, kind of like the virus, we need some protection. Well, Jesus is the answer. He is the protection. And we need to put our trust in him. Romans chapter 6, verse 23 says that the wages of, or the consequences um, of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. So, uh, the consequences of believing in Jesus is life, eternal. The consequences of denying is saying, Lord, I don't want forgiveness for my sin. I'll take it, and I don't care. I'm going to go to hell. A lot of people think there's just going to be a party in hell, but that's not the description that we see in Scripture. It says that it's very lonely, very dark, very hot. So, not a good place to be. <clears throat> Isaiah 41, or in Isaiah, verse 41 says that he was referring to Jesus when he said this because he saw the future and spoke of Messiah's glory. So Jesus tells us here, as does John, that um, Isaiah is telling us that Jehovah is Jesus and that he is the Messiah because he... Um, foresaw that. He saw what was going to happen. And that's the great thing about um, prophecy is we can always look back. And hindsight's always twenty twenty. Jesus did come. He came exactly into Jerusalem, the very exact moment that was prophesied. And, uh, and here John just tells us that Jesus is Jehovah, even as Isaiah, referring to Jehovah, is also saying that this is Jesus. Well, many people did not believe him. However, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit it for fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue. For they loved human praise more than the praise of God. <clears throat> now, this isn't something new. We all struggle. We all struggle with this idea of being accepted by other people. It is easy for us to become shy, uh, maybe withdrawn, and say, no, I'm not gonna sing out loud um, because my neighbor might hear me and I don't sing very well. But Jesus said, um, sing with a joyful noise. He doesn't say sing with a beautiful one, he says sing with a joyful noise. <clears throat> the same thing here, the Lord is saying, you know, don't be afraid of getting kicked out of a church that has already kicked me out multiple times. Um, be okay with that. Uh, don't worry about what people think of you. Worry more about what I think of you. Because I won't kick you out. In fact, Jesus says when we accept him that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. And I like that. Well, now if we think back a little bit to verse 26, Jesus had also stated that anyone who wants to serve me must also follow me. Follow meaning in actions, do those things that the Lord has asked us to do. Because my servants must be where I am. We need to move in the same direction uh, that the Lord is. So if you're getting booted out of a church uh, because you believe in Jesus, then that's probably a good church to be booted out of and go to a place where you know that you can be fed by Jesus. Well, um, he would also go on to say um, that the Father uh, will also honor anyone who serves Jesus. So as we serve uh, the Son, as we serve Jesus, then God the Father also says, I like that, and I am going to honor you. Um, and and that, that's kind of an awesome verse right there as we've already gone through. <clears throat> we cannot make the praise of man our goal um, because then the praise itself becomes our God. And Jesus warns us here, you need to be worried more about what God thinks rather than what man thinks. Verse 44, Jesus, Jesus shouted. Now, this isn't like yelling and screaming 
he is speaking loudly because he's sharing with a large group of people. You remember that this is during that time of Passover, so there were a lot of folks around. So he's speaking very loudly, but also the idea is repetitively. He's saying these things over and over. Sometimes that's what I need. I need, I need to get it in my head by hearing it over and over, and maybe even sometimes a little loud. <laughs> Jesus shouted to the crowds, If you trust me, if you trust me, you are trusting not only me, but also God who sent me. So if you're trusting Jesus, you are also trusting the Father who sent Jesus. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. Now when we recall um, our previous uh, teachings in verse 20 and 21. You remember some of the Greeks came to Philip. He was the only one that had that Greek name. So they had a little bit of a, a connection there. And they said, sir, we would see Jesus or we would seek to see Jesus. And when we are seeking Jesus, we are seeking the Father. When we see Jesus, we are seeing the Father. Jesus also said back in John chapter 10 that I and the Father are one. So Jesus claimed to be God um, over and over and over again. And that's what the Pharisees and that's what the Sadducees did not like about Jesus. And like the fact that he was claiming to be God. And uh, we know that he is because he's the only one in history that ever died for all of the sins of God. The people. So if we put our trust in Jesus, then we are trusting Jehovah. We are trusting the Father. Verse 46 I have come as a light to shine in this dark world, so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me but don't obey me, for I have I have come to save the world, not to judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth that I have spoken. I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. And then as we wrap things up here, and I know his commands lead to eternal life. So I say whatever the Father tells me to say. And Jesus says here that he did not come into this world previously in Scripture to condemn it. Here he says, I did not come to judge it. It's easy to sit back. Even if we thought, well, you know, maybe Jesus is. But he could have done that from heaven. He could have judged us from heaven. But he didn't. In love, he left heaven. He came. He was born he grew up, he experienced the same difficulties that we did growing up poor, growing up in difficult situations, having to walk everywhere you go because you're so poor, or just falling down and scraping your knee. There's a lot of things that we go through in life, and Jesus came. He could have sat and pointed his finger at us, but he didn't. He left heaven, he came down here, he loved us and said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stretch out my arms. I'm going to be lifted up off of the earth on the cross. And I am going to die for all the sins of the world. That is an amazing thing. He came to forgive everyone. So what are we left with? We're left with a choice. We're either going to allow the Lord to come into our lives and forgive us. Or we are going to reject this free gift <clears throat> free to us. It cost him his life. But if you reject it, then you're basically saying, God, I not only don't believe in you, but I don't want your help. And the problem is there we end up following Satan into sin because hell was not created uh, initially for people. It was created for Satan who had fallen long before. And so I would encourage you to accept the Lord, to accept that forgiveness in him. Now, again, even as we talked, sin is kind of like the coronavirus. You've heard the term, misery loves company. 
hey, well, we don't like sitting alone. We usually try and grab our friend and say, hey, why don't you come and we'll do something goofy, you know, and it ends up causing us problems. We don't understand the damage that uh, sin um, really does. A lot of people would say, oh, my sin doesn't affect anybody else. Um, well, I would say that the result of this coronavirus is, is a bit on the selfish side. Uh, people did not inform other people of what was going on, and that could be um, a sin. Um, we need to understand that our sin does affect people. The other thing about sin, like a virus, it spreads everywhere. And we are in a world of hurt, not from just coronavirus, but from sin itself. Today is the day to repent. Today is the day to say, Lord, I'm going to put my trust in you. I'm going to put my faith in you. So how do I do that? Well, in keeping with the word, in Romans 3.23, we are told, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So first of all, we need to recognize that we're sinners. I do. If you've stolen anything, your friend's pencil, um, a cookie out of the jar when you were a kid, you've sinned. You're a thief. Uh, if you've lied, even a little white lie, um, you know, it's, uh, it's still a lie. Um, so we need to recognize that we are sinners. In Acts 3, verse 19 um, and 20, the Lord would say, Repent and then turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, gone. <clears throat> that, at time, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. So we need to recognize that we're sinners. We need to repent of our sin. And then um, lastly, uh, Romans chapter 10, the third thing. If you declare, Romans 10 verse 9, if you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, then you will be saved. So we need to receive the Savior. So we need to recognize that we're sinners. We need to repent of that sin. And then we also need to receive Jesus into our heart. <clears throat> and then we get to do number four, which is just enjoy forgiveness. Enjoy the things that God has in store for us. He has brought us a future and a hope. <clears throat> that said... Let's pray. We'll give all of this uh, time to the Lord and uh, we'll let you enjoy the beautiful sunshiny weather today. So Father, I just pray if there's anybody out there that, that needs to be saved today, that they would accept you. They would recognize that they're sinners and put their faith in you. But Lord, we would turn from it our sin. Do a 180 degree turn. Go away from those things which pull us away from you. And that, Lord, is just repentance. And I thank you that you have shown us what that is. Help us to repent. Help us to turn from our sin. And Lord, for those that have not received you, I pray, Lord, that even as you said, that people would call upon you today. They would say, Jesus, I need you to be the Lord of my life. I need you to come in, to cleanse me of my sin, to forgive me from all the wrong that I have done. And Father, you are so faithful to forgive and to forget all of our sins. May Lord, from this day on, we walk in the light as you are in the light, having fellowship with one another and with you, knowing that the blood that you shed on the cross cleanses us from every sin. So we thank you for this. We thank you that we can uh, use this platform of Facebook to, uh, to be able to minister to those <clears throat> who, cannot, uh, who cannot make it to church because of uh, the guidelines set forth. 
pray that you would just minister to each one of those today. May we, again, Lord, just continue to pray for those that are sick. Continue to reach out to you for that healing, for direction, for guidance. Thank you for hearing our prayers and for blessing us with the scriptures. May we walk in them all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, <clears throat> we are finished, and so we will let you go. Enjoy a sunshiny day. Maybe get outside in your half acre um, or whatever you might have around you. Go for a little walk um, and just enjoy sunshine. Lord bless you. Have a great week.